Warm greetings this International Women's Day. Uh, I want to appreciate the organizers for bringing us together on this important topic as well. Uh, just to say that the Biden-Harris administration is fully committed to building a future where everyone can access opportunity and make the most of their potential. Building that future depends on safeguarding our health, including protecting and advancing sexual and reproductive health and rights for everyone. Our national gender strategy lays out a vision that goes beyond rebuilding the status quo to instead building a world of equal opportunity for all. Both in the US and around the world, we see broad support for gender equality, but we can't pick and choose what parts of that agenda to support because they're all connected to people's lives, especially in times of crisis. So in the US, we're building this world of equal opportunity, but we know that that requires improving women's economic security, eliminating gender-based violence, addressing the climate crisis, and expanding access to quality healthcare, including protecting the constitutional right to safe and legal abortion that was established by Roe versus Wade nearly 50 years ago. And at our Department of Health and Human Services, we're doing our part to deliver on that vision. In October of last year, we strengthened Title X, our domestic family planning program to restore access to equitable, affordable, quality family planning services for more Americans. And in January, Secretary Becerra launched the first ever Task Force on Reproductive Healthcare Access, which I have the pleasure and honor of co-chairing with our Assistant Secretary for Health, Admiral Rachel Levine. Even as some work to roll back the rights that women in the US have enjoyed for decades, we're working across US government to identify swift actions that protect and bolster sexual reproductive health and rights domestically and abroad. I'm well aware we're grappling with some of the same challenges as partners around the world. The same harmful ideologies that threaten women's bodily autonomy abroad can be found here, leading to disparities in health outcomes and diminished economic opportunity. But again, in times of crisis, we must work together to find solutions. As we all rebuild from COVID-19, as we combat the effects of climate change on health, evidence shows that ensuring everyone can decide whether and when to have a child is one of the most effective ways to increase women's income and education and to improve health outcomes for women and children. Millions of unmarried adolescents have unintended pregnancies each year due to lack of information, gender-based violence, limited access to contraception, and lack of agency to make decisions about their own health. Investments in sexual reproductive health and rights are essential to empowering the world's population, including young people, helping economies and societies grow and thrive. That's why the US is proud to remain the largest bilateral donor to global family planning assistance, a commitment spanning more than five decades. That's why President Biden revoked the expanded Mexico City policy, which harmed women's health around the world. And that's why the US's partnership with UNFPA is critical with decades of shared investments and expertise in family planning, maternal health and gender-based violence. So as we navigate a challenging moment here in the United States, we are encouraged by the leadership shown by other countries in our region to advance a complete vision of gender equality. And we will continue to work together as we build a more just and equitable future for all. Muchísimas gracias.